a very warm welcome to all of our attendees around South Africa this morning. We want to say thank you very much because it is only through the information and uh, you know all the feedback that we are getting from you out in the industry that we have these toolbox talks and as well as a very big thank you to IOPSA, SIOSH and PIRB. Now this morning we are talking about victimization. Uh, it's a question that came up not in terms of the word victimization, uh, but a few questions that came up around discrimination in the workplace, uh, which largely moves to an HR point of view, where we let them handle it from that side, uh, or a labor law perspective. However, the OSH Act does mention victimization though uh, specifically as an issue in the workplace. So we're going to take a look at the law. What is victimization? What should we be doing as companies to prevent this type of attitude within a company? And what are the roles and responsibilities of each person in the company uh, to hold up their part in preventing victimization from becoming an issue in the company? Well, to start off with, we need to first understand what victimization is. Now, according to labor lawyers, the term victimization does not reference in any labor law. So this is very difficult because when we go to a court because of some sort of dispute in a company, uh, victimization is not covered under legislation. However, the definition of victimization is covered under various other forms of wording uh, or legal jargon that you will find out in the uh, basic conditions of employment, as well as your basic ethics or privacy policies that you have within normal statutes of South Africa. And that definition is the act of singling someone out for cruel or unjust treatment. Victimization then is the process of being victimized yourself or becoming a victim. So what does this actually mean? How does this fit into a workplace and why does it have anything to do with occupational health and safety? So you might be asking, well, uh, this term is very broad. Uh, what does it actually mean? What does it mean for you as a plumber? If you're an employee, how do you feel about this? If you're an employer, how do you feel about this? And have you ever had uh, victimization or the terminology unfair treatment happen to you in the workplace uh, when it comes to do with something in occupational health and safety? As we mentioned, the OSH Act does cover uh, this word or this type of definition of somebody being treated unjustly in terms of obeying the law or not obeying a direct command from a company because it goes against what the law says. There are two parts uh, to section 26 of the OSH Act where it states very clearly victimization forbidden. So that is the subheading of section 26. Victimization is forbidden. Now instead of reading uh, the entire section, uh, section 1 basically says that a person cannot be unfairly treated if they have complied with a lawful prohibition. <coughs> Sorry, uh, this is in terms of somebody not doing something because they've been told that they are prohibited from doing that. Um, they cannot be unfairly treated if they've complied with a requirement or a request or a direction of the Department of Labor Inspector, or even if they've given evidence before a court of law or the industrial court, or has done anything which he may or is required to do in terms of this Occupational Health and Safety Act, or perhaps he's refused to do anything which is prohibited within this act. So what are we actually saying here? Well, if you had to climb up a scaffold to work on a roof and you are working at heights and the law states that you must do so safely and within your risk assessment methodologies and all your other health and safety documentation, it states that you must wear a safety harness when working in that environment. Should an employee refuse to work on that roof because he doesn't have the proper safe working procedures outlined within a safety file uh, or a full body harness or some sort of other 
document, piece of material, equipment, or anything that is needed in the interest of health and safety to be able to perform that job safely, he is valid in his refusal of work. Now, where does victimization come in to this? Well, should a person refuse work, he cannot be unfairly treated by other employees as well as by the employer himself. And this is when somebody refuses to do something and they are called a chicken. They're not going to climb a ladder unsafely. And so a little bit of peer pressure is put on them because uh, you should be an adult and not be afraid of heights. And well, some people are. So you cannot be targeted or singled out uh, because you refuse to do something that you feel is unsafe. Now, again, we're not taking personal opinion into this. So if it is your personal opinion and it's not based on some sort of legislation within the OSH Act, uh, then your employer can mandate that you must be doing that work as long as it is in the requirements of the OSH Act. So very simply put, if you do or do not do something that the Act uh, obviously says you're not allowed to do, it prohibits you from doing, or that the Act says you must do, you cannot be singled out for doing or not doing that very thing. Now, I have an interesting question, and this came out from quite a few of you that listen in on a Tuesday morning. Who can be a victim? We go back to our definition that is someone being singled out or someone being targeted for unfair practices. So whether something is being done to you or something is being said to you. Now that word someone, does that mean male? Does it mean female? Does it say you have to speak a certain language and only you can become a victim? Does it say that only people from a certain background can become victims? Does it say that only someone who has a certain position in the company can become a victim? Well, not at all. Someone refers to any person that works in a company. And so even an employer, someone who owns the business, can even become a victim to victimization from his employees and that has happened in certain cases so what are we really saying then what what does this mean for you as someone who has perhaps experienced this in the past well if you refuse uh, to work in an unsafe manner and this is just one example based on your lawful obedience to the OSH Act first of all victimization can take many different forms it could involve spreading malicious rumors about that person who uh, refuses to work unsafely or who prefers to wear the correct safety um, PPE, abide by the correct safety procedures and insulting them or degrading them. Uh, perhaps as an employer, you might overload them with a lot of work in order to bring pressure on them that way, uh, continually picking on them, swearing at the employee using foul or vulgar or abusive language towards the employee and so on. So there's many forms that victimization can take. Whatever the case though, what we have to understand is that subheading of section 26 says victimization is forbidden. In other words, it is unacceptable and it is a violation of human rights of the employee and also a violation of the employee's right to be treated with dignity and respect. Now, this goes for any employee, regardless of your race, your creed, your background, uh, your current position in the company, male or female, any single person. Remember, we are talking about equality when it comes to occupational health and safety. We all have the right to be treated with dignity and respect. Now remember, in Section 8 of the OSH Act, it states that an employer has the duty to protect their employees from harassment as opposed to subjecting them to harassment. And harassment there again uh, can be in a form of victimizing or victimization 
of that employee. Again, we need to have some sort of valid reason for obeying a law or disobeying a direct command from our superior because it is not in line with a certain aspect of the Occupational Health and Safety Act. So we're not saying that you can just refuse work. What we are stating is that you need to understand the risks and hazards attached to your work and then ensure that you have the correct safety measures to carry it out safely. If that is in place, well, then there's no need to refuse work. However, as an employer, if you have an employee refuse work based on some aspect of the work not being safe, what do you do? Well, when it's time sensitive and it costs us money, we do tend to say, just get it done. Let's push ourselves and then we put some sort of other marker in front of an employee to motivate them. Finishing up early, going home early, getting a bonus. Yes, although this is a good motivation for many people, remember getting home safely, uh, getting home alive, and ensuring that we are always safe should be a bigger motivation, not only for an employer, but also for you employees. Now, the second part to this uh, section 26 of the Occupational Health and Safety Act under victimization is forbidden. It also mentions that no employer shall unfairly dismiss an employee, reduce his remuneration or salary, <clears throat> alter the terms or conditions of employment by reason of any information that the employer has received regarding the results contemplated in section 12 Point two. Now, I'll just briefly explain what section 12.2 states. That is when somebody goes into a doctor or a hospital uh, for some sort of disease or illness, and it turns out that they perhaps do have some sort of disease. And in this case, we'll mention, let's say, HIV AIDS. Uh, let's say this person has now discovered they are HIV AIDS positive. Victimization would be unfairly dismissing this employee based on the knowledge that you have now received from that doctor or the hospital. You are not allowed to reduce the rate of their pay. You're not allowed to alter the terms or conditions of their employment based on that information that you have received. Now we're mentioning HIV AIDS in particular uh, as a disease that is often found out in many industries, out in construction work, uh, or even in South Africa in general, but we are not only singling out HIV AIDS patients. What we are mentioning is this is just a topic and this can be applied to any other disease, perhaps even COVID-19. Now, can you unfairly dismiss an employee because they have COVID-19 and for two weeks they need to be sent home uh, or perhaps they're in hospital and they cannot perform their duties? Does this mean automatically you can dismiss that employee? Does it mean you can reduce the rate of his remuneration because he's not working at that time? No, victimization is forbidden and you are not allowed to unfairly treat that person in any way because of the information that you have obtained from a medical practitioner. So again, we're mentioning HIV or AIDS just as a topic within this legislation, but it falls within any other debilitating disease or any other condition a person might have. Perhaps fear of heights uh, could be one of them going through a psychological questionnaire uh, with a medical practitioner and finding out this person cannot work at heights, not because he's incapable of physically working at heights, but mentally he is not prepared to do that. So, what needs to be done? Well, we cannot treat any person. And again, we're not singling out what person, male, female. We're not singling out a race. We're not singling out any particular group of people. We are saying someone, because that is what the law says. It can be any person within the company. And we would never, ever want to treat them unfairly or discriminate against them in any way, especially with regards to any recruitment processes, 
uh, appointments of that person, uh, job placement, job classification or grading, remuneration, obviously giving benefits to that person in terms of their employment, uh, even an employee assistance program. Is there a way to help this employee uh, through the difficult time that they are going through? Uh, different job assignments, workplace and facilities while they are there. Now you exclude that person from eating with you uh, because of this information that you have received. You cannot treat them unfairly or discriminate them uh, with regards to policies or practices that happen to do with occupational health and safety training and development, even performance evaluation, promotions, transfers, disciplinary measures short of dismissal, as well as termination of services. So all of this basically means that every single person has the right to be treated fairly and equally within a company. And this is the essence of what Section 26, Victimization Forbidden, means we do not want to treat anyone unfairly now again we come back to that question is it possible that only an employee can become a victim well not at all even employers can become the victim uh, by the ganging up of employees on the employer now, while we're discussing uh, this point in terms of occupational health and safety, although it's a section in the OSH Act, why is this being discussed as a toolbox talk topic? Well, the reason is many questions have arisen uh, due to COVID-19, uh, people getting COVID-19 or people working in a company that COVID-19 struck and all of a sudden we've been unfairly dismissed, we've been unfairly treated uh, and what does this actually mean? Well, again, in terms of health and safety, it's very broad in its aspect about victimization. Yes, we are speaking in terms of health and safety, uh, but it also mentions a person's health. Health means if you get sick, you cannot be unfairly treated. So again, uh, safety is one aspect, ensuring you have the right file, the right tools, the right PPE, we want to ensure that we are not unfairly treating anyone. But also in terms of our health, we never want to discriminate against any person that may seem to have some sort of health issue. Now on the screen, you'll have really the essence of what we want to bring to you in this toolbox talk. And this is by Mahatma Gandhi. He said that, be the change you want to see in the world. Now why would you think this is important? Well, for many, and I heard a lot of your concerns, and we want to say thank you again for your feedback, but we want to know what is the next step from here. You brought your complaint, uh, you brought forth your issue, or the current relationship that you have within your company, and yes, it is a valid point. We are validating it by discussing it this morning in a toolbox talk. However, do not look only at the problem. Let us focus on a solution and do not look to another person to bring that solution for you. By relying on another person, you might be let down. We never want to put our happiness or our health and safety in the hands of another person. Take charge of that yourself. Is there something you can do? Can you be the change that you want to see in the world? If you want to be treated fairly, then treat others fairly. If you do not want to be discriminated against, do not discriminate others. No matter their position, even if it is your employer, uh, just because he is in a higher position within the company as the owner of the company does not mean he deserves any less respect and dignity uh, when spoken to. And employers, regardless of what position any employee holds within the company, uh, from your most general laborers uh, to your middle management, to your upper management, each one of them deserves the same respect and fair treatment uh, that any human being should be given. So again, let us just remind you that we hope you become the change you want to see in the world and start with your own health and safety. 
So thank you very much for listening to us this morning on this Toolbox Talk. Uh, we do have a couple of reminders for you. Uh, introducing the Man in the Van podcast. So this is something that is brought to you every Monday at 8 a.m. These new episodes are going to be found on maninthevan.co.za, Apple Podcasts, Player FM, Iono FM, Spotify, Pocket Casts, or on the new app Plumber. What is Man in the Van? Well, it is education through conversation. So take a look at some of the plumbing news, education, and more. Tune in anytime to these podcasts and make sure that you do not miss uh, the episodes every Monday at 8 a.m. And since it's a conversation, uh, why not get in touch and share how you feel about things in the industry and what is affecting you so that we can really handle uh, these deeper issues that you might be facing. So again, thank you very much for joining us this morning with our Toolbox Talk. Uh, we look forward to any questions that you might have and want to remind you about the Hazardous Substance Cement PPE discussion, MSDSs, health and safety files, all around cement and why we look at it as a hazardous chemical substance when working with it. Is it a hazardous chemical substance? How do we actually view cement? Well, tune in next week, Tuesday at 7 a.m. for this discussion.